this is um, an early uh, piece I did. I painted on a bunch of hexagonal tiles. Um, it's really heavy to move those around. So. Uh, and then this is uh, kind of went back to that same theme. Uh, later, this is a, a print of a soccer ball. You could actually fold it up. Oh, maybe I have a picture of that. Nope. <laughs> you can totally cut this up and fold it in the soccer ball. <laughs>
this I felt, I guess, more with the designers and illustrators that really just uh, drew a topographic map, which you know, pretty much anyone could have done. But I thought of the idea, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is uh, also pretty much anyone could have done. It's uh, a specific mountain on the Tour de France. It's La Blaise, the one of the, the kind of uh, archetypical uh, peaks. It's the, it's the big one. It's the can you say more about why you often get mad with commercial projects? Oh, yeah, but it just sounds like me complaining about clients, which uh, I don't know, never likes to do. Um, no, I, I think that there's like a like a, a continuum between being like a an artist in which the ideals at both ends, which like at, at, you just start off, you're doing exactly what someone else wants, and you're just doing like you know uh, Photoshop, cutting out backgrounds, and with zero creative flexibility and then like as you sort of uh, get more clout you can kind of develop your voice and people like come to you for your ideas and on, on the other end of the spectrum there's the uh, impossible ideal of doing exactly what you want and having people come to you just for I mean I think that you know uh, certain fine artists have made it They're like whatever you want pay you a shit ton of money just just do that do your thing perfectly and I, obviously I think most people are somewhere in the middle and even you know, fine artists are still under pressure from like the galleries and uh, uh, people to kind of create a certain buyers to, to create a certain product, but you know I'm obviously I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle most of the time. I'm trying to work at the point where people want to need to do exactly what I want. Um, that's always a, an ongoing struggle, um, and the frustration comes when they have to do more what they want to what I want. Or um, you know, I'm just a big baby, that's <laughs> everyone's got to you know, work for someone else. Uh, this is a kind of a sketch I made that turned into a, uh, a wallpaper for a website. Um, it's supposed to be about October. It's kind of you know, Halloween colors a little bit. And uh, snakes, I made mean, a lot about snakes. That we, uh, this is a, uh, a scarf that came out of that, uh, that project. Um, that's a nice fancy scarf. And then here's me using the same idea again. That's what I'm talking about, about recycling ideas and how it's totally not a problem at all. Um, <laughs> now that I realize how hard good ideas are to come by. Um, this is for a shoe store in uh, New York City. It's a really fancy shoe store that sells women's shoes that cost way too much. Um, and uh, they invited me to do this installation there. Um, and it was the first time that I could actually uh, work with this, this, uh, this vinyl stickers. The uh, wallpaper company that I work with is pretty old-fashioned. They mostly only have screen printing beds, which is fantastic. They do the, all this like hand-printed screen printed wallpaper uh, on these huge, like 45 foot long printing beds. And it's really hard to make them always. So it's kind of expensive, but it's still like seems like wow, you do all that work and still only charge $50 for one. Trouble. In any case, this is just printed out from a, you know, like a big water type vinyl printer, um, which does cutting at the same time, which is why if you do those kind of like uh, individual pieces, you can see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's kind of break out from the, the wallpaper, which has kind of always been uh, a, a love hate thing with me. It's like it's great to be able to make a pattern because then you can just do like section that covers uh, 27 by 54 inches and be like, that's it, you did this and now you can cover the entire like, wall, just like one section and then, then you're done. It seems like that's a pretty good deal, efficient for me. Um, but then it's like, I always want to do more than that, like break out of that pattern, which is really tough if you already made one screen and it's going to cover the place. But when you can do a printout of a whole wall, you can have a pattern that then uh, you know, breaks the mold or escapes from it and does variations and is generally more interesting and like that's uh, why even though I love the, the kind of the tactile and like the, the quality of the printed of uh, screen printed wallpaper this is not as nice to look at it's a little bit shiny and it's just like it's a sticker um, but this is great it's one is temporary too you can do things like you know break out uh, the, uh, the repeat this is uh, another major kind of snake um, it's kind of hard to tell why the white is crawling in out of this pack. And uh, I made the same design. Uh, uh, it's a letterpress as well. And uh, I did it again. It's, it's, I'm allowed to uh, see a little bit better here. I'm not sure why.
when I proved this, this slide. <laughs> I think it's just a proof that I got to go to teaching. Um, kind of brag about that. Um, but, and to show some of the really cool habits that you had everywhere. Uh, this is a skateboard that I made by cutting out a bunch of, oops, uh, bugs, laser cutter. Um, if you haven't played with one of these things, they're amazing. I think everyone should have it. I think probably everyone will. And I'm a little bit bummed out about that because <clears throat> a lot of the stuff that I do uh, relies on this kind of super fine detail that you can only get. And people that don't know what a laser cutter is um, always ask if I did it by hand. And sometimes I tell them I did, and sometimes I tell them <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. And they're like, oh, that's cool though. But, <laughs> I think they're becoming cheaper, and I think eventually everyone will have them like, you know, like HF printers if you want one. And, uh, then no one will be impressed by it at all. But right now, it's still pretty impressive to me because it's like, oh, it's really skinny, like little antennas on the cockroaches. Um, I had a good detail shop, I guess I didn't make it. So, um, this is a, for a skateboard auction. It's up now if you uh, feel like supporting kids in Afghanistan. It's a uh, nonprofit called Skatistan. Maybe my parent would too. Uh, this is a, another adventure in the world of um, three dimensions, which is really just two dimensions wrapped in a circle. Um, <laughs> that's for a show in which uh, I was asked to do a diorama. And uh, I've never done anything like that, but it sounded really fun. And so I had just a bunch of uh, chipboard laser cut. And uh, it's really hard to capture any specific angle because it's a problem with three dimensional things. Um, I had photoshopped a lot. Um, it had a light in the middle of Christmas lights, and it's got uh, kind of uh, inspired by In the Night Kitchen by Maurice Sinek. I don't know if you've read that book, but it's kind of like the buildings are sort of resemble two liter bottles and milk jugs and things you might find kind of in, in the kitchen or around the house. So, again, my uh, appreciation of house objects. You can see a, a <coughs> fan there, and maybe a television, and a windshield wiper, and a, a paper plate. I'm happy with how this turned out. Um, I kind of wish someone would buy it. It takes a whole lot of room, and I don't know how to do it. Uh, the center part, I've been thinking about buying it. The center part rotates too. It's not a little turntable. That's why it's always blurry. Um, because the light, when it comes on, 